What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp materials tutorial for you. So today's video is actually brought to you by a question from a member of my SketchUp Essentials community. So the SketchUp Essentials community is basically the product I created so that I can give people more one-on-one -on -one support for their questions. So it's got SketchUp training inside of it. It also has live calls and a community forum. So if you're looking for more SketchUp help, um, you, you you want something where you can really get your questions answered in real time, make sure you check out the community. So I'm currently wrapping up my Valentine's Day sale on that, or really Valentine's Week sale. Um, that's going to close later on tonight. So if you do want to check out the SketchUp Essentials community, you can do that by visiting the link in the notes down below and getting 40% off by visiting right now. Again, that's going to close at end of day today. So make sure you go check that out now. But now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you've ever brought in custom materials inside of SketchUp, you might know that you need to be really careful with the kind of images that you use in order to do this, right? Because a lot of the time, um, so if you go on like a flooring supply website or something like that, they've usually got a little swatch of a piece of flooring um, that you can basically take a snip of and then bring that into SketchUp as a material. The problem with that, and we're going to go ahead and create a quick material using an image I downloaded. So I just took a snip off of a flooring supply website. Well, the problem with bringing this in and dropping it on this face is you get this like pronounced tiling effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and bump this size up a little bit. Let's go ahead and make it 36 inches, even though that might be a little big. Um, so what you get is if we look at this, and I'm gonna deselect this image, notice how this floor tile image is tiling right in the sense that you get these like really pronounced edges in here and it makes it look like this like weird rectangular repeating pattern so the way that sketchup shows images is it basically takes whatever texture image you have in here and it just repeats it over and over again well the problem with this is this image isn't designed to be repeated over and over again right it's designed to be a little swatch that you can see on a website and so what this does is this gives you this really like jarring um, unprofessional looking effect inside of your images and so there's two ways to fix this. So the first is when you're looking for different materials, you want to look for seamless textures. So if you search for a texture, for example, you want to search for a seamless texture. Or even better, you want to go to a texture website that really already has those pre-made textures assigned to it. So you don't necessarily want to go to something like Home Depot's website and just like take a snip. That's not going to give you the best result. So I will link to a video in the notes down below that talks about a bunch of different texture websites. And so there's one I've been using a lot lately called 3dassets.one, formerly textures.one. The reason I like this is because you can type in a search and it'll search multiple different websites. And so all of the textures that you get in here are most likely going to be seamless because they're coming from texture websites that do that. And so let's say we wanted to bring down, let's call it this floor right here from CG Bookcase. So what you could do is you could just bring down these images. And in this case, all you want is the base color. That's really all you need. So we're just going to bring down the 2K base color. And that's going to be this image right here. You can just right click on it and you can just save it as a texture like this. And then we can just bring it directly into SketchUp. So we'll just create a new texture, find this new image, and click on OK. So if we bring this in, you're going to notice that it smoothly tiles based on the images that are right here. You can adjust the, stop, the size in here as well to whatever you want it to be. So I can adjust this for example, and our texture size is going to adjust as well. So the easiest way to get seamless textures is going to be download textures that are designed to be seamless in the first place. And you can definitely adjust these, right? So you can like position them, adjust the rotation, other things like that so that they actually um, face the direction that you want. That's not a huge deal, but you do wanna make sure that those images are seamless. Now there is a tool that I really love that's free called Materialize, which I will link to in the notes down below. You can download that from the download section. This is a tool designed to simplify the process of making textures seamless as well as simplifying getting textures ready for rendering. And so I don't want to get super in depth with it right now. Um, there's a video I'll link to down, down below where I show you how to make those textures seamless. But basically what this does is this allows you to bring in 
an image. So for example, if we were to take this original image right here and bring this in, all right, so what you're gonna do, and this is a little bit weird, I don't know why this is, um, you need to click on this button for tile maps. And so this tool is really designed for rendering maps, meaning it creates all of these different maps in here. And for some reason, the tool that lets you create something that's seamless only works if you have a map. So we're just gonna click on create to create a height map, and we're just gonna click on set as height map. Then the option for tile maps shows up. And what that's gonna do is that's going to allow us to adjust the overlap on this a little bit. So you can adjust the X and Y in here. And you can see how what this is doing is this is basically like blending these together, right? So basically it's blending these so that you get a little bit of overlap in here so that you're not gonna get those uh, really pronounced so you're not gonna get those really pronounced tiles in here. But obviously this isn't going to be ideal just because you're getting kind of a weird like blended together look in here. I mean, it works. You, you definitely get that kind of look in here where things aren't tiled together, but the texture also looks kind of odd. So I, I would seriously recommend if possible, downloading seamless textures wherever possible. Um, you can definitely take this then, you can click on set maps and then you can just save this as fixed texture and click on select and then you can open that inside of SketchUp and your tiling is not going to be as bad. So let's say we were to create a new texture and open that new file. Notice how the tiling isn't as bad but it's still definitely tiling in here. You just don't have a pronounced line. So that's something where I would seriously recommend wherever possible and this image might have been a bad example, but I would seriously recommend wherever possible just going to a texture website and finding something that's close to what you want unless you absolutely need an image inside of your SketchUp model. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you have SketchUp questions that you want answered, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials community through the end of the day today. That is available for 40% off. You get to keep that price as long as you're a member of the community. So that gets you access to SketchUp training, that gets you access to the community forums. And my favorite are the live call-ins where people actually call in and ask SketchUp questions. So we have a lot of fun talking about SketchUp just in general, kind of geeking out about 3D. It's just a really fun group of people. But if you're interested in that, I will link to that in the notes down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.